Um, yeah, it's it's no clickbait. Um, remember, my father-in-law's Hasselblad is not even mine. It stopped working and it might have been my fault. But we'll get to that later. Um, my wife told me to, to speak more slowly, so I'm, I'm gonna try. Uh, yeah, welcome back to another episode. And it's the winter time outside at the time of recording this video. And it's actually quite beautiful for this time of the year. And I thought, what better time to actually take a look back at my summer trip to a very special place that I would call both my second home and maybe even a spiritual hideaway. And obviously, I told you, I promised you, again, one of Time Magazine's 50 World's Greatest Places. It's a little island called Zöd. Yeah, everyone who knows me in person likes to make fun of me because I have a slight tendency to romanticize this island completely out of proportion, but this is it. This is the place where I fill up my tank like nowhere else. I have come here more than 50 times and in my whole life there has not been a single year without visiting this place, just like my dad and his dad. And it's hard to explain why. The weather can be fairly unpredictable even in the summer and there's almost always a strong wind blowing which smells like salt and oysters and heather. But I love to stare at the horizon for hours and let go of all the noise. It's just like meditation. So naturally, I have been taking a ton of pictures at this place over the course of the time and I absolutely do not get tired of it as this island is a true shapeshifter, if you will. Yeah, that, that was the first time that I brought the Hasselblad. And one thing that I always wanted to do is get up super early and try to photograph one of those magical sunrises. And I was kind of well prepared. I tried to match the low tide with the clear sky forecast and everything was kind of set up. And still it didn't go down the way that I expected it to. There were a couple of clouds right where the sun was supposed to come up, but it didn't matter to me. It didn't bother me at all because everything was so peaceful and quiet except for the photogramma. So the process of shooting film obviously is the perfect match for a place like this as it helps you to focus even deeper on the things that make you feel balanced and chill. I mean, there's no time of the day, month or even year looking like the other and it's incredibly inspiring to just grab some fresh seafood 
and calm down and notice every little detail around you. It's almost like there's no right or wrong when taking photographs over here. It's more about the feeling you have both when actually shooting and looking at the pictures when they're back from development. See, when I was a child, I used to put some sand in a bottle and bring it back home and I would keep it throughout the year until my next trip. Taking medium format film photos with a 40 year old camera is pretty much the grown up version of a bottle full of sand and seashells. Um, I mean, you, you know what, let me show you. The photo grandma. I mean, she was super sweet actually while she was following me around starting random chats, but it was kind of hilarious that my vision of being completely alone for a couple of hours pretty much fell apart at this point, but whatever. moment he knew he fucked up well i guess i did i mean this camera was built to be used in a studio environment and i'm pretty sure the engineers who built this thing didn't have some idiot taking it to the beach that ungodly wind force in mind i mean i can basically bury the sony in the sand in order to go have a drink at the beach bar and clean it in the ocean afterwards but it looks like the Hasselblad is a bit more of a diva in this regard so I took it to Germany's last Hasselblad service technician who worked his wizardry on this thing, removed all the sand including a broken screw and everything was fine. The good news is it didn't stop working until a few days later so I was able to shoot a couple more photos. Just to be very clear, I didn't actually drop the Hasselblad into the sand, but obviously those tiny dust and sand particles flying through the air can pretty much make it stop working since, remember, everything is fully mechanical. And by fully mechanical I mean including everything that is needed to make a fully mechanical camera work, like oil and tiny little springs and probably diesel and whatnot, and B, there's no such thing as weather sealing. I mean, who would have thought, right? Then again, what's what's the alternative here? I mean, days like these really get me excited because the weather is really doing its thing and the conditions are changing by the minute and that's where the magic really happens, right? So I guess the key takeaway here is to just put the camera away when you're not actually taking the f***ing picture.
Okay, apart from the fact that it takes ages to do these kind of long exposures, it's super fun. 10 out of 10, I would recommend, but it is pretty surprising how violently the vanishing light is affecting the exposure value. I mean, once you're completed measuring the light and you're getting something like a five minute exposure and then you start setting everything up and a couple of minutes later, you're re-metering the scene just to be sure, you might suddenly come out with 18 minutes of exposure and it can be crucial at times. As this trip slowly came to an end, I really wanted to spend some time at this lovely little marina for a couple of black and white pictures. And these were literally the very last photos I took before the camera completely jammed. I was using the mirror lockup function a few times and eventually that was the one that stopped working first. Anyway, the Hasselblad once again made me look at things in a different way. Zöd is a bit like Germany's Long Island. A bit of Montauk, a bit of the Hamptons, and certainly with a lot of media exposure. Pretty much the exact opposite of a secret escape. And I've come here my whole life. In fact, I even got married over here, which makes it extra hard to gain a different perspective on this island. But this camera, and especially the process of taking medium format photos with all of its aspects, setting up a tripod, loading film, metering, focusing, helps me to appreciate this place even more. And I can't wait to come back. We have to go back! Um, okay, that's it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you around for the next one, which I'm really looking forward to because I shot 11 rolls of film on Mallorca. Peace.